What is going on guys, Scorpion Slayer 66 here, coming at you for another month of vinyl pickups. Now, uh, as I said last month, I started working at a record store and it's actually got me to buy less records in a way. Uh, so I haven't picked up as much as I have in other months, so I'm gonna talk about them a little bit more, but I've definitely gotten some stuff I've been looking for for many, many years in this video. So let's hop right into it. First up is the newly released Swan soundtracks for the Blind 4 LP box set. I'm not going to talk too much about this one or like the packaging because I actually did a unboxing of this on my Vinyl Corner channel with 64 Bit for Life, so I'll link to that probably through a card up, whatever. But yeah, um, one of my all-time favorite albums has finally gotten the vinyl treatment it deserves, and it's absolutely fantastic. This box set is definitely worth the $80 price tag that it retailed for. Even comes signed by Michael Jira himself. So yeah, uh, really cool. Again, if you guys wanna check out everything that comes in this box set, uh, go check out that video on the vinyl corner. So in tandem with the last release, we have this Swans EP. I don't know how to say it correctly, so I'm not gonna try and butcher it. But yeah, this was a compendium EP that came out around the same time that Soundtracks was released. And this is all like spoken in German. It's really weird how just shifting the language barrier can make certain things sound even more menacing. Like this album, this era of Swan sounds so menacing, but this it's spoken in German is just fucking crazy sounding to me so yeah uh, again this was a record store day item limited to 4,000 it's pretty basic packaging just two LPs in these plastic sleeves they're really nicely pressed and yeah this was the main thing I wanted for record store day but sadly my store didn't get any even though they told me they were going to um, so I just finally found a copy and I actually got it for retail so pretty cool so the next three all come from when I went on vacation. My girlfriend and I went on a very nice vacation and there's a actually good record store in Ocean City, New Jersey, but it's not labeled as a record store. It's called Grassroots Music Store. And they just have these two bins of records, like two little nice stands and some boxes. Not the biggest record selection on the planet, but everyone is killer. And I picked up three things while I was there. Uh, the first one is the Grateful Dead's Oxamoxua. Now, I've been really into the Dead lately. Um, they were kind of a band that I didn't appreciate until I was a little bit older and kind of explored a little bit more with music and kind of came back and understood a little bit more why people like this band and they've really been growing on me heavy. This is a newer reissue. I believe this was like 2013, 2014. It's the Rhino repressing and Rhino is a really solid label. So yeah, the record sounds fantastic and the packaging is really nice. The picture quality is fantastic and the sleeve is really sturdy. So yeah, uh, just another great one. I mean, this obviously introduced St. Stephen to the world, which would become one of the biggest Grateful Dead songs. They would jam on that all the time in their live sets. So yeah, just really fantastic. And I don't know if this is true or not, but supposedly Courtney Love is on the back of this album. She's like the little baby somewhere. So yeah, uh, really cool, really great album and definitely one of the better Dead studio albums. Next up is a punk classic and this is Fear the Record. I remember learning about this album in my early teens when the Kurt Cobain Top 50 Albums of All Time list like had come out or had gotten re-relevant for some reason. And I was just learning about music at the time, just like the history of it. And this album was really a big album for me in my early days. And yeah, I still hold it very, very special to me. I mean, it's absolutely a punk classic. Uh, if you haven't listened to this and you're into the whole punk sound, uh, Fear are one of the most just kind of ferocious in a way. They just keep going at it. Like I know all punk bands are like that, but Fear are just very special in their own regard. Uh, yeah, it just comes on black here, but it's a really nice pressing. I don't think it's quite 180, but it's really thick and it sounds fantastic. And that's really all that matters at the end of the day. So yeah, uh, fantastic album. I mean, really, if you're into punk music, I'm sure you've heard it. And if not, you should listen to it immediately.
And the last thing that I picked up at Grassroots was the Residence Duck Stab. Now, I've been really into the Residents. Um, I've known about them for quite a long time because of their costuming and how they wear the eyeballs on the stage. But uh, I recently got into them actually because of Earl's sweatshirt. He talked about how they were a really big part in his music making process and sampling and all that. And I gave them uh, another try. And yeah, they've just been a huge musical obsession for me. They're just kind of like, a weird darker edge of Frank Zappa in a way they're just kind of like one of those weirdo bands that tries to like break musical uh, like standards and stuff like that they just do really whacked out shit and uh, yeah this has one of their best songs on it which is the first track Constantinople and it's just weird fun poking at the music industry almost in a way just type stuff and yeah uh really fantastic album and this band is super underrated all the rest of these are random pickups that i've had at my place of work and one of the first things i picked up was the new parquet courts album wide awake uh, absolutely one of my favorite albums of the year definitely top three these guys are bringing back that wire television talking heads like art punk sound but they just have such a fucking great sense of musical chemistry and groove and uh yeah this album is fantastic this is the collector's edition so it comes with uh like a cool inside art book that's the lyrics and then there's random like prints of art done by the front man of the band adam savage um but yeah uh it's really fantastic the pressing itself is incredible um it's definitely 180 gram and rough trade always puts out good stuff so yeah, um, this is a fantastic package. It's a fantastic album. And yeah, like I said, if you're into stuff like The Talking Heads, Wire, just any of that like 70s artsy punk stuff, definitely check these guys out. And Danger Mouse just adds so much to their sound with his production style. Next up is an original pressing of King Crimson's USA. Now, King Crimson obviously isn't on streaming, so a lot of their albums I found through random purchasing on vinyl. And one I've always been curious about is this one. I see this all the time on reissue, but I've never heard it for obvious reasons. But yeah, uh, I was about to pick up the reissue and just the day that I was going to, actually this original press came in a collection, so obviously I had to snag it. I think it was like 10 bucks. But yeah, this is a really fantastic live album. Um, I really wasn't expecting to like King Crimson live as much as I do because they seem like a very studio heavy band to me Like obviously their jams are very raw. They're very musically coordinated with one another But it just seems like they would work better in a studio setting to me, but absolutely they kill it live This is just fantastic stuff. It's a mix of uh, Court of the Crimson King uh, Lark's Tongues and Aspic, that era of Crimson. So yeah, uh, this is a really fantastic album and I'm glad that I have an original as opposed to the reissue that I was gonna buy. Another dose of Grateful Dead for you. This is Blues for Allah. Now, uh, again, I've just been getting recently into the dead, but even as a patron of this record store before I started working there, it was really rare that I ever saw this album. So when it came in, I definitely wanted to snag it. It's one of the better studio albums. Again, a lot of these are kind of just groundworks for them to jam on in the live setting, but uh, I feel like their studio albums get a little bit too much hate in that regard. Um, I still think they're pretty good groundworks. But yeah, uh, again, this is an original pressing and that's cool. And it comes with this lyric sheet, which has some Hebrew on it, which I found very interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, really great record. And I think this was like 18 bucks. But again, this is one that I hardly ever see and I'm very glad to have it. Next up, this is kind of a disappointment, but it's my own fault, and this is Fela Kuti's Zombie. Now, obviously this album is a classic, it's a masterpiece, it's something I've been looking for since I started collecting. But uh, I got a little too excited when I saw it come in the store and I didn't exactly thoroughly check, and this is actually just a compilation that has the song Zombie on one side and two other Fela songs on the other. So I'm still on the lookout for this one, um, but again, it was my own dismay. It happens to every record collector at some point, they're just, too caught up in the moment or something like that. But yeah, uh, still regardless, it's really cool to have some Fela vinyl. I mean, this is an 80s press, but again, like a lot of this stuff is kind of hard to find because they weren't really cared about until like later in time, like almost even now, like, yeah. So uh, I'm still regardless, happy to have some Fela vinyl, even if it isn't the thing that I thought it was. 
Next up, I have an original pressing of John Cale's Paris 1919. Now, this is a pop masterpiece. Uh, obviously, John Cale came from the Velvet Underground, and he had a long and fruitful career, but this is definitely one of the highlights. It's a really interesting detour because he was making such different music right before and right after this album. Like, this was just such a weird sonic detour that was never, like, replicated again. And in that way, it's special and also kind of heartbreaking because he did so good the first time that you kind of want to hear more but at the same time uh, with an album this good I will take it so yeah uh, this is just fantastically arranged kind of more orchestra heavy pop music but the lyrical themes are a lot more in depth it allows the listener to openly get into the album but if they want to give to the music it they'll receive back with interesting themes messages that kind of shit so yeah uh this album is really interesting for pop music and i think it's definitely an essential for the genre next up we have captain beefheart and his magic band's dock at the radar station now this album is so underappreciated i feel like really most of their catalog is underappreciated and they kind of get pigeonholed as the trout mask replica band but their other endeavors before and after are so much different and they're all pretty much equally as impressive i mean safe as milk this album lick my decals off they're all fantastic but anybody only ever talks about trout mask and i feel like that's kind of a shame because a lot of these have some of the greatest songs of all time some of them are fantastic albums but yeah again this is an original and this came into the store and obviously i had to pick it up because uh you really don't see original beef heart stuff too often um again this was like 20 bucks i believe or 19 or something like that but i'm more than happy to pay that um i'm still looking for like i said like lick my decals off safe as milk clear spot or spotlight kid like albums like that they're all fantastic and if you like trout mask replica i highly 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 encourage you to listen to other albums by them because they're all pretty much equally as fantastic I was also lucky enough to stumble upon some Brian Eno records this month, two of them, so you'll see the other one next. But yeah, uh, this is Here Comes the Warm Jets. Now this is probably his most acclaimed solo release besides maybe like Ambient One, but I definitely see, especially now, a lot more praise for this one. Um, I don't know what to say about Brian Eno. He's one of my absolute favorite musicians. I know I've like rarely talked about him on the channel besides like talking heads and his production, but Brian Eno is honestly like one of the greatest musical figures of all time the productions he's touched his solo albums his stuff with roxy music all of his collaborations the dude was just a musical powerhouse and yeah he has so many classic albums to his belt that they're all just pretty much equally as classic but yeah this one is fantastic it's just some great like artsy rock kind of punky just like really well arranged and produced stuff and uh again this is an original on island so very cool stuff I got, this was 20 again i believe um but again original eno records aren't something you see every day uh and especially for one as popular as this and the other eno record that i managed to score is taking tiger mountain by strategy now uh i actually prefer this personally to warm jets this is like probably like in my top three like eno solo records um but yeah this one's just fantastic to me i don't remember the process right now but uh, i'll probably leave a little note about it somewhere but there was like a certain strategy that he did where he would do a different artistic hindrance to himself like he would not use a certain effect or a certain instrument and that really pushed him to experiment out of certain boundaries or like bend the pop formula in very very interesting ways and yeah it just goes to show like again how incredible he was how dedicated to music he was and the evolution of it and just being at the forefront and yeah uh just absolutely fantastic artist and album and again this is an original on island so very cool stuff and again this was also 20 dollars. and again i will pay that all fucking day long for original brian eno records i'm still looking for a ton of them i unfortunately don't have many eno records because again uh they're definitely not the best selling albums of all time by any means but yeah he's just got one of the best catalogs of all time and the last thing i got for this month is definitely the thing i'm most excited about i've been looking for this album since i've been collecting records and i've appreciated this album since before that 
But yeah, uh, this is The Germs, G.I. This is one of my absolute favorite punk albums of all time. One of my favorite albums, period. This album is just front to back, amazing, blistering, but still interesting and dynamic punk rock. And yeah, um, this is an original on Slash Records, which has been something I've been looking for for, again, many, many a years. I've been collecting since I was like 14, so it's like going on five, six years for me at this point. But yeah, um, it's in fantastic shape. Uh, it was dirty when we got it, and I think I paid about 40 or $35 for this, which if you know the going rate for this is absolutely ridiculous that I paid that, um, in a good way. But uh, I'm just very fortunate to be working in a good environment and to have been a patron and then to understand my passion and all that. And this even came with the goddamn mail away order for the Germs t-shirts. like. This is punk rock history, dude. Like, I know I sound like probably an edgy kid, but like, this is so much history to me. Just like little shit like this just sums up what punk was about. You would get a little flyer and you would send it through the mail and they would screen print it themselves and send it to you personally. It was just so DIY. And yeah, um, again, super stoked to have this. This is definitely one of my favorite pieces in my collection. So that is all my pickups for the month of July, guys. Let me know down below which one was your favorite. And while you're down there, hit that like button, subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other social medias and my side channel with 64-Bit for Life. Until next time, guys, take care.